Hey guys, it's Brent from Joiner Die Knives. Thought I'd come before you today and show you a little tips on sharpening. Um, we got a few different knives here and a lot of different sharpening uh, stones and techniques. And I know that with all my customers, this is one of the things that just mystifies the most people. If you've never really sharpened before, a lot of times when you put a knife on a stone, you end up with a more dull knife than you started. And there's just a few tips that can help you with this. But the main tip that I can give you is treat knife sharpening like a skill that you have to learn. It's not just a thing that you just pick up a knife one day and decide to do, but it's kind of a craft of its own. But it actually can be almost like a zen process because of the repetitiveness, it's peaceful, just kind of get out of your head, and you actually be something you really enjoy. So we're gonna talk about our different stones, we're gonna talk about um, some of the touch-up things like your steel or your strop, and, and the techniques of actually um, getting that, uh, that sharp edge. So today we have a variety of stones. Right here is a bench stone or an India stone. This is essentially the same abrasive material as sandpaper, but it has been formed into a solid stone. Um, a lot of these tri-stones that you'll find at the store are Arkansas stones, which are a uh, natural stone that's mined and graded into coarse, medium, and fine. There's also silicon carbide, uh, ceramic, and diamond stones. But I'm just gonna be working with some traditional stones right now that are easy to get into. Um, I definitely believe in teaching processes, um, using uh, common materials and not something that you have to break the bank to go out and get. So you could even go up to, you know, a discount store and buy a $5 stone to get started uh, with these methods. Or you could spend as much as, you know, hundred or thousands on uh, sets of stones. Obviously, if you have jigs like this, uh, this Hinkle's pull-through jig, then it's a jig. You learn how to use the jig. We're gonna talk about freehand sharpening so that you can pull up this stone no matter where you are, down in the woods, at home, in the kitchen, or you know, if you're at your in-laws place and they ask you to sharpen your knives for you. So we're gonna start today with our practice knife. Now, if you have a nice knife that you wanna sharpen, how about this? Go to the thrift store, buy some junky knives, and practice sharpening them. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can kind of break that in. You could not worry about scratching your knife and you can get good at sharpening or, you know, proficient before working your nice knives on it. So right now what I have is the Forged and Fire uh, knife from Walmart. And I love this thing because as a Forged and Fire contestant, we were all kind of shocked that they came out with a made in China knife. Um, but you know, it's been a, little, a lot of fun to kind of work with, so. This is our Norton India stone. I got the biggest one they made. We can use different small stones and I'll show you the differences in how to use the small and large stones but it's nice to have that big, long surface area to get into. I'm going to use oil on these stones. It's very important to use a lubricant when you sharpen, whether it's water or oil. What happens if you don't use a lubricant is that the steel granules get embedded in the surface of the stone, and they, they create a slick surface that blocks the abrasive from cutting the steel. So they glaze over. So you'll see sometimes an old stone that will be shiny, and that's because the steel is embedded and has completely covered the surface. But when we use oil or water, as long as we use some kind of lubricant, it actually helps to carry away the, the, the ground surface. It will carry away the dust from the steel and the used abrasives. Another thing that's really interesting about our abrasive stones is that as we use them, we break down the abrasive uh, exposing new sharp particles. And so that's what we wanna do here by using oil. Um, when you get a new oil stone, you're probably going to have to soak it in oil as well. But usually, if you soak your oil stone in some mineral oil for a while, that'll probably be the only time you have to do that because it'll retain that oil. It's not like water where it will wick out into the air over time. So we'll get a nice sheen on that, make sure we have plenty of oil and a surface that we don't mind getting some oil on underneath. Generally speaking, when I go to sharpen, there's a couple main rules of thumb. Before we even get into angles and things like that, we wanna make sure that we sharpen the whole blade and we wanna go from heel to point as we sharpen. So heel all the way to point. If I have a long stone, then I can go all the way in that long stone. If I have a shorter stone, all I have to do is I have to bring my knife across more quickly so that I get that same action. 
Another important thing to remember is that whatever we do on one side of the blade, we need to do on the other side. And that, of course, applies to symmetrical blade grinds. A chisel grind would be the kind of grind where you only sharpen one side, but most knives have that symmetrical grind. Three swipes on each side. I could go one and one. But I find, especially if I have a lot of work to do on that edge, that I can keep a very consistent angle if I just repeat that same cut. But I just remember how many I did on the one side and come back the same. Now, I get a lot of people asking me what angle I use. I don't use an angle jig, so I can't tell them exactly. We shoot for something like 17 degrees on the chef knives. But an easy way to find out what the angle is on your knife, because of course you may have a few knives that are all different, this is my favorite way, is to take a Sharpie and mark the edge. Now a Sharpie will wipe off very easily off of steel, but if I mark this edge with a Sharpie, you may be able to tell what I'm getting at. Whenever I do a pass on my stone, I will be able to see if I properly ground all the Sharpie off, indicating that I have, I have sharpened that at the correct angle. But if I didn't, I should be able to tell if I sharpened too much on the cutting edge or too much back up onto the blade. So that's looking pretty good. I only see Sharpie up on the big flat of the blade. It's pretty shiny there. Just right down here at the heel though, I can see that I didn't quite get enough. So this is a really great corrective measure to make sure that we're getting consistent grinding as we, as we sharpen. Now there's a matchbook rule of thumb when it comes to your angle as well. If you lay a matchbook down on your stone and then you lay the knife with the cutting edge on the stone on the matchbook, that's generally a great angle um, for your knife. And what's interesting about that is if we use a short knife like this, which our burning trout is only about an inch tall here. What that's gonna do is that's actually gonna, the height of that matchbook is gonna bring the sharpening angle up to maybe something like a 25 degree angle. And so generally, the types of knives that are thinner like this, you're gonna wanna have higher anyway for a mo more robust edge. And the types of knives like chef knives that are taller, that's gonna automatically lay those down at a lower angle and give us a more fine sharpened edge. This knife, which I'm practicing on, is really thick. This is a production knife and a cheap one at that, so it's gonna have a lot of steel there. So again, for uh, when it comes to your practice knives, it's good to get cheaper knives that, have, that are overly thick because you're gonna have to grind more steel off, so it's good practice. Check my edge here. Now if you'll notice, my arm and body are moving with the knife. I'm trying not to do too much with my wrist moving because I want to lock in and give really smooth swipes. I'm also gonna spread out my fingers and grip so that I have as much control as possible as I pull. So how do we check whether or not we're sharp? I like paper, paper's good. Cause you know, I'll have to shave my whole body as many knives as I sharpen. Not quite sharp enough. Now I didn't try this before I started, of course, but as you can see, it's, all, it's still not quite getting there. Tearing the paper, not cutting through. You might be surprised to know this though, that printer paper is not the hardest paper to cut and a, a knife that's nowhere near shave sharp will still cut printer paper. So we have some finer paper after that once we get started cutting. The sharpness of a knife has to do with the angle and how fine the cutting edge has been polished, essentially. One mistake that people get into when they try to sharpen knives is they don't establish that the burr, which is the cutting edge, at their coarsest grit. So we're gonna take the coarsest grit that we have and bring this down until it starts to feel sharp. It's gonna feel like rough, but it's gonna start to cut. If I start to go up into my higher grits before it's actually really got a burr on it, then I'm not going to be able to get my burr and I'm always gonna have a microscopic flat spot that will never cut. So it's like I have a bevel that ends in a flat and I'm just polishing that bevel there and it's still flat. So I've gotta get this thing all the way down until it's almost tattered at the end with a burr. Usually you're gonna be knocking the burr back 
and forth. Once you get that burr as I go this way, it'll feel more coarse on the one side than the other. If I go that way, so I should actually start to feel, I'll go across with my finger here, and the more, almost rough it feels, that means I'm starting to get a burr. Whereas if it passes smoothly over, it's probably still blunt. Another trick there would be to look directly at the knife, directly at the cutting edge, and if you have any reflection, any bright spot on the cutting edge, that means that that's flat and it's reflecting light directly at your eyes. So we wanna make sure that that's all dark going down. All right, well, we've gone over some basics. We're gonna keep talking about that, but we're gonna switch out from our practice knife to one of our real knives. This is our Joiner Die Kitchen Saber. It's our eight inch chef knife in Nitro V. And we are not quite sharp. Um, most of the knives you're gonna be uh, going to sharpen are gonna be gonna have some kind of bevel on them and you're gonna be matching that. If you have a knife that doesn't have any bevel that's brand new, it's usually good to use a low speed grinder to put in some kind of a primary bevel. But generally most of us are gonna be working with something that is dull that started out sharp. So we're gonna do that. Again, I'm just gonna check, I'm gonna make sure I have plenty of lubrication on my stone. I'm gonna use the coarsest stone possible and have a look on that, visually inspect my knife. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way down. I think I counted five that time, so we'll go five back. Now it's important when I use a stone to start with the heel on the stone and as I come down to the end, I want to lift away. If I bring that across too far and go down, then the corners of the stone will scrape across the knife. There's just no sense in scratching up your knife while sharpening. You don't need to do it. If you just pay attention to how you do so, then you won't make any contact with any part of the knife except for the cutting edge. I didn't sharpen very much at all, but I just want to check my progress. There's no harm in that. I'm using little bits of the paper to just see what it's starting to feel like. Okay, as you can see, just a few swipes. Let me start to get there. Now, when I cut my paper, I'm gonna listen, and I'm gonna look at that cut edge. If it's loud and almost sounds like tearing, that means it's just sharp enough to cut through. Also, I'm gonna drag it through slowly and I'm gonna see if there's any little places that catch, and that'll be an indication that I need to work. If I'm working with a really dull knife, I can take and find that spot that really needs help. I actually can see the very tip of this is not sharp at all. Then I can go ahead and just grind a little bit down on that. What that's gonna do for me so that's gonna go ahead and focus my effort right on that spot. And now, of course, I want to feather that in and make sure that it's smooth all the way down. Again, our Sharpie can come in handy because sometimes we're just missing a part of the knife because of the curve of the knife. And so we wanna make sure that we're always adjusting a little bit. Now, when we hand sharpen, we're not gonna end up with two absolutely laser perfect bevels like we would with a jig. But if we are consistent and close enough, we're gonna get a really ripping sharp knife even without the use of a jig. So I know that I'm going through that paper and I know I can feel a bit of a burr. So all I'm gonna do now is flip this over and we're gonna go on our finer side of our same stone. You can actually hear the difference in the sharpening on this side of the stone. It's quieter and smoother sounding because the grit is smoother. A note on the pressure that I'm using. Generally, the weight of the knife with your fingers on it is all the pressure that you need. Sometimes when you have damage on an edge where you really have to grind a lot off to get through that, a nick or a chip, yeah, you might really bear down on your uh, coarse side. But generally, raising the burr and restoring your bevel is just the weight of the natural feel 
and not pressing very hard. All that pressing is going to do is it's going to cause inconsistency. You may even flex the knife and you're not going to have a nice smooth cutting edge. So again, we got our sharpness from the Corsa stone. And now, just like sandpaper on wood, we're going to go up through our grits, polishing until we achieve that the level that we want. I generally go to a medium fine level. I want that knife to shave hair, operate really well. But I find that if I continue to go up through the multiple thousands grits into the 10,000, 13,000 grit, that generally what I'm doing is I'm making it much more impressively sharp to the touch, but a delicate edge that will wear away after a few cuts, especially something like cardboard or opening a sack of concrete or something like that, you don't have a 13,000 edge anymore. Now you're back down to sort of that medium fine. So I generally, and but that medium fine tends to stay medium fine for a long time if I have a robust edge. Can you kind of feel that? There's also a trick that we use on our fingernail. Our fingernail is a great sense of, is it sharp? So it, does that skitter across my fingernail easily or does it kind of catch? I can kind of try to let it go in and there's different places along the edge that I can feel. It takes a few times to, to get used to that, but, but it's a really good way to know because we have all these little ways of trying to figure out how sharp we're getting as we're working. Now on this knife, I'm pretty sharp from here down, but my heel, I didn't get much. So I'm actually gonna just focus my attention on the heel on a few strokes here and then I'll go back into the whole thing. It is okay to focus your attention on just one area because if you have one area that's not sharp and the rest of the knife is sharp, if we go over and over, we can actually accidentally reshape the knife by grinding too much on the sharp part, which will actually start to change the shape a little bit. We'll be grinding steel away. So it's best to get the thing as consistent as possible and then just feather it back in so that it's one long cutting edge. Now I like to think about sharpening as care for the knife. And you know, we really love the knives that we make by hand here at Join or Die. And we like the idea that we're making hopefully something that could be passed down, an heirloom even. And so the idea is if you really enjoy using your piece, then you ought to be able to enjoy taking care of it the maintenance on it. I um, mean, so one of the things is if you get frustrated by sharpening, then maybe just like think about it a little bit differently, you know? This is just something that you could spend time learning a valuable skill, working with the knife that you love to work with in the kitchen or the field in a different way. And taking your time to take care of it well, it's gonna make it last a long time. And it's gonna give you Hopefully a connection that goes through the knife all the way back to the one that made it. I know uh, knives that I've gotten from family have been sharpened down, sharpened down, sharpened down, and I, I look at that knife and I just think about all the times that it's been sharpened, you know, and it's just a really interesting connection to the past. Generally, I do the most passes on my coarsest grit. Then, as I do my surface conditioning, it doesn't take as long because really I'm just cleaning up that surface. So I'm gonna go through on my Arkansas stone, oil that. Now you can see that I'm gonna to have to take different strokes because I have to go across at a quicker pace in order to use the whole stone on this large knife. And as you can see, I'm going back and forth now. There's really no reason to try to grind away with these higher grit stones. Now, not only am I taking the deeper scratches out and refining the edge, but I'm also knocking that burr back and forth. So what's actually doing the cutting on a knife is the burr. So essentially where the knife comes down extremely thin, there's a, basically the grain of the knife is tattered and it creates this little burr and it can actually be pushed back and forth. And what we wanna do is we wanna slowly refine that and those tatters get down into a smoother cutting edge and then we're pushing it back and forth. And so, Sharpening is the actual act of abrading the steel away to get down to that smooth edge. Whereas honing a knife or stropping a knife is gonna be the action that we're gonna do at the end, which just realigns the burr. 
While you're using a knife, you want to hone your knife as often as it needs it, as much as every time you use it, so that the cutting burr will stay aligned and you will actually get much more life out of your cutting edge if you use a hone more often. Because a hone will not take steel off the knife, it will just burnish the edge. Whereas what I'm doing now, even though it's a fine stone, is abrading the knife and taking steel away. I'm gonna to start to pay attention to the sharpness now through the paper. Okay, I'm at a point with my printer paper where I can't really tell if it's that sharp. So we're gonna do the only thing that these things are good for and we're gonna start cutting it up. The Uline catalog is super thin and so it's harder to cut. It takes a sharper knife to get a really clean cut through the Uline catalog. Now I'm hearing, it's cutting pretty good, but I'm hearing a little bit of that louder sound. You notice that I'm going diagonally. You gotta get yourself a little surface tension on that paper and go diagonal. So we're gonna look at that. So I don't think I need to do anything more there because it's pretty sharp. But I bet if I tried to shave, it probably wouldn't quite shave. It's feeling pretty nice though. So now I'm gonna go over here to my strop. I have two honing devices. I have the steel. This is a nice old antique steel. You wanna feel the steel that you might use. This is called a steel because it's made out of steel. It's tempered very hard, so it should be harder than your knife. And it has either ribs or knurling. This one has knurling. This is old and it's become a little bit smooth, but I like it because of that. You wanna feel that if it has any nicks or dings in it, that's gonna be destructive to your knife edge. So if you have an old um, hone that's been abused that has uh, places in it, then you're not gonna be able to use it. So that's just a matter of like you're cutting into it. If you want a lot of control, you can actually run it like this. If you have, you're in a busy kitchen maybe, you don't wanna be swinging your knife around. Just a few times here is all that's going to do. There's no need to go all day on that. Like we said, it doesn't take off any steel. So now we're just gonna see if we notice any. Now we can go further if we use the strop. We've all seen the old leather strop of the old barber on the Andy Griffith show. But this is a polishing compound. You just pretty much get it about anywhere. But if you order a strop, you usually come with compound, but Lowe's you can get your different grades of polishing compound. I just cut myself out a piece of wood here, glued some leather to both sides. That's raw veg tan, full grain leather, and just did kind of a coarser and a finer polishing compound. Very important on your strop, since it's leather, is that we wanna go backwards like that because we will cut into the leather, of course. So now what I'm doing is just in the same way a buffing wheel would polish a knife, we're polishing the cutting edge. So we're getting a higher degree of sharpness by just abrading that in an extremely fine way. That's a few tips on sharpening. I hope it's helpful. Obviously, you're gonna to have to find what works best for you. Um, I would encourage you to start simple. You know, go get something that's not too, uh, too expensive and start with some practice knives and just have fun with it. Um, but please don't get discouraged if your first attempts actually dull the knife more than when you started. Remember the Sharpie technique. Um, and you know, if you find ceramic rods or diamond rods, there's all kinds of different things. Um, and you're gonna find the thing that works best for you. But I think the good old fashioned bench stone, learning the technique to be able to use that is gonna carry you the farthest and keeping your knives sharp for those situations where you need them. So if you'd like to learn more, please visit joinerdieknives.com. We've got a lot of information on the blog, as well as items such as our snake oil that can help condition your knife.